How you doing? Thank you for tuning in. My name is Marvin Bradley. I'm the Vice Principal at Sun Valley High School. I had principalship before at Northwest Halifax High School. But let me just share some information about myself. First of all, I am a native of Chicago, Illinois. I've been in Chicago, Illinois for 18 years before I joined the military. But while I was growing up in Chicago, Illinois, I just got into a whole lot of trouble. I didn't have an idea of what I wanted to do, how I was going to do it, or who would I have to support me and make this get it done. So coming to Chicago, I, I pretty much ventured off into the gangs, uh, ventured off into messing with guns and theft, um, burglary, and all those kind of things any young man would do. But for me, I just wanted to make certain that I was trying to have a life for myself. Now, one thing I didn't know or I didn't have was direction and leadership. Uh, my mother had uh, 15 children. I'm 11 to 15, and I'm always so grateful that she didn't stop because at some point they don't have 11 to 15 kids no more these days. And so because of that, I uh, ventured off and kind of got into um, a lot of trouble. But anyway, let me move further on from there. I went to six different high schools before I even graduated from high school. And the reason why I went to high school because, again, I couldn't find myself. And not only that, well, we were homeless a couple of times. Uh, my father left the home. My mother's trying to raise 11 boys and 4 girls. And so those all became just issues that surrounded the neighborhood that I was brought up in. And so when I joined the military, after getting out of high school, eventually getting out of high school, I might have been ranked, um, I want to say, probably 150 out of 160. So there was no direction for me on being successful in school. In fact, I recall teachers saying that I would never be or amount to anything. And so because of that was being said to me, I pretty much lashed out at that teacher and told her, if I don't amount to anything, it's because of what I might do to her. But anyway, let me get away from that. Let me, just, let me just talk about when I went to the military, because I had a background, because I knew how to lead, because I knew how to talk with folks, I felt that it uh, allowed my career to move off pretty fast. In fact, being in the military, I was in the U.S. Navy. I moved to the rank from as chief petty officer in 11 years. Normally, it takes you 16 to 18 years to move to chief petty officer. But not only was it a blessing, I think the real thing for me was I was just able to navigate, knowing the street, knowing the, the education, the education that I needed, I was just able to navigate and, and make a difference. So being in the military, I went around to a lot of different places, uh, seeing a lot of things. I began to like it, but prior to uh, enjoying the military, when it got to my first time of getting out, I had uh, three and a half years, I was going to get out of the military, and lo and behold, my brother came and coached me, hey, listen, don't get out. Realize something else, you got to do 20 years somewhere. And I think that was so profound because it allowed me to move in a direction and have 20 years and make certain that something was going to happen. So again, even though I had that conversation when I had about three to four years in, I still felt that I wanted to get out. So it came around to my second time trying to get out or staying in. I decided I would still stay in. Now at this moment, I had roughly around eight, seven and a half years in, and I decided, you know, it's looking good, I'm making rank, I'm getting recognized, now it's not me in the line, it's me in front of the line telling other folks what they need to do for the country and for the people. So that all inspired, I mean, that just inspired crazy, I mean, when it went so well, that was very, very much appreciative about being in the military. But I can tell you also, one thing that really made me... Uh, digress and just to see what was going on. When I went back home to Chicago and I saw the place I came from and I realized I cannot function in that area anymore. So from that point on, I just realized that uh, I need to stay in the military, make a career, and do the best I can. Well, as a, as a young sailor at the time, uh, about 21, 22 years old, I got married, moved my kids down to, uh, to South Carolina, Charleston. Uh, keep in mind, and, and I had a young uh, daughter born, I was 16 years old, so I was in the streets, and, and I was hanging out, and I was pretty promiscuous. But to just move forward, uh, during the time of the military, and during the time I decided to go ahead and, and finish up and stay in the military, again, I moved from an E1 to an E8, and then high as you go to E9, so I moved to E8 in uh, 23 years. 
So I retired from the military, um, and I started an organization that was called Youth Productions. And the reason for Youth Productions was I felt if you can get young men or young ladies involved in employment and doing things and raising some money, well, they start feeling good about themselves. I had to experience that, but I had to experience it in a different way. And so I ended up in uh, North Virginia. Uh, prior to retiring, I had to go to different high schools and recruit young men and young ladies. And then I went to a, a gentleman who provided me with a second floor uh, building. And the friend I knew from the military, we all worked together, put carpet on the floor, did some amazing things. And we had students, and we had a graduation class. They had to do resume writing. They had to do mock interview skill training. And it was tremendous. In fact, I went to the paper and get a lot of press out of North Virginia. But the press then from students started to realize who they were, what they can become. They started getting employment. I was able to, with the folks that worked with me, get 80 students employment in two years. So that just went so well. This went, it actually, I ain't going to say it went viral, but it got a lot of press. Uh, during that time, I was on TV, I was on a radio show and talking with folks, trying to make all this stuff work. So when I retired from the military, I um, wanted to always get into education because I felt God has been blessing me to raise my children to be more or less successful in their lives. So I got into education and did student teaching at school um, about three and a half blocks uh, from where I was staying. And during that time, I was just able to just uh, network in the community. Uh, next thing I knew, I had a job at alternative school setting. And I was working with kids who were so much like me. Uh, used to get in trouble, they didn't have understanding. But what I asked the principal at that time, allow me to take on the biggest challenges that you have. The students coming in in Norfolk Public School who was turned or sentenced or turned to school allowed me to take on those students. Oh, the principal, he did. And some things I started putting in place, the principal saw, I guess, my passion or compassion for what I was doing. He asked me to be his dean of students. But one thing I was doing that I recall more than anything else, if a young lady was to walk into my office, all the young men would stand up. And they would say, what's going on? I said, ma'am, they're just asking you. They're just respecting you for coming to the classroom. And the one close to the door would ask her, do you have to have a seat? And that was so impressive to the assistant principal at the time. And that just kind of spiraled through the community. And people in the community wanted to come to the school to see what I was doing with some young men who was causing so much problem in the regular school. How can they come to alternative school having to fight with the same student and they sit next to each other and they respect each other for who they are? But I think that all comes from the leadership. And so I was just amazed, I mean truly amazed about uh, being in that setting. So make a long story short, um, after about three years, I went to a job fair in North Carolina. When I went to North Carolina, I, uh, went, I was in Raleigh, and I went to a job fair, and I met this lady there, uh, Sandy was her name, i never forget it, Sandy. But anyway, Sandy asked me, she said, uh, uh, my principal is looking for a, an assistant principal, and I think you fit the mold. She didn't say why, but I understood that. She said, I think you fit the mold. Well, I sent my resume to her principal, and the gentleman called me in for an interview. Lo and behold, he hired me as assistant principal. And this was in Pittsburgh, North Carolina. So during the time I was in Pittsburgh, North Carolina, as assistant principal for Northwood High School, I uh, was able to embrace the community, embrace the students. At that time, we had about maybe 900 students. But I knew, I got to know the students so well. I knew probably about all those students by their first name. I don't know whose first and last name, but I knew pretty much by their first name. And so that became very impressive to the community, to the students, uh, and to the faculty and staff. So I stayed there at Northwood High School for uh, three years. We did some great things. Started an after-school program at Northwood. Uh, got so engaged with the community, so engaged with the student. I stayed there, and at that moment, the saddest thing that happened while I was there, we had a principal that took his life. 
while I was the assistant principal. This principal took his life one year after I was there to the day. And so that was pretty much a sad, a sad moment, sad opportunity. But I still uh, remain strong to what I was, I was doing. And so when I left uh, Northwood, High, uh, Northwood High School, I got a phone call. It's a funny story, but I'm going to share it with you anyway. I got a phone call from uh, a principal out of Charlotte Mecklenburg School System. When he called me, again, at that moment I was in Raleigh, so he called me and said, I have this school that I'm opening up. I receive your name, and I'd like to interview you for this position. Well, at that time, my wife and I were talking about moving out of Pittsburgh, North Carolina, or out of Raleigh, actually, uh, to another location for opportunities for principal. So when the gentleman called me, it was probably about 8 o'clock at night, my wife answered the phone, and my wife shared with me, you have a phone call. So I took it as if she was pulling my leg. And so when I got on the phone, the gentleman said, my name is Mike Matthews, and I am principal of this new school that's being built, and I would like to talk with you for a position I have available with the assistant principal. And I said, Mike, who? Now keep in mind, I'm thinking this guy is joking with me. He said again, my name is Mike Matthew with one T, okay. And I don't know why he said that, but that was something for me to go in on. So I said, okay, Mike Matthews with one T. So where's your school? So now I'm being kind of, I guess, out of line to a degree, but I didn't know what he was actually talking about. Anyway, so to make a long story short, I went upstairs, got on my computer, from a name he gave me out of CMS school, and I looked on and noticed that it was a real, it was a real Mike Matthews, and he was actually opening a brand new school, and he wanted me to come in and be his AP. So, uh, probably about uh, a day later, the next day, I called him up. I said, Mr. Matthews, one T. I I said, uh, this is Marvin Bradley, and we talked yesterday, and... Uh, he said, yes, but I'm certain that uh, Mike Matthews thought that I was a lunatic because, <laughs> because the way I had went in on him. But I explained to him the reason why I had the conversation we did the night before, and I kind of explained to him, my wife and I have been joking about moving, and all of a sudden I get this phone call. But I knew that's only the, the grace of God that this is what happened. And I know God moves things. God has been moving graciously in my life for his mercy and his miracles. And so uh, so he and I talked. But when I got on the phone with him, uh, he said, well, I do have an interview, and I'd like to set you up for one. But he said, I can tell you right now, it's going to only be 20 minutes that we can talk. Now, keep in mind, coming from Raleigh to Charlotte Mecklenburg Schools is about three and a half hours, or roughly there, for 20 minutes. And I said, I gave some thought, but being obedient, I said, okay. So I came to Charlotte to meet with Mike Matthews. That 20 minutes interview lasted two to three hours. We talked that long. So I kind of shared with him some of my background and he picked up, you know what, and he shared with me later on, the reason why I hired you was because you went through so many things and your chances for failure was great and you overcame those chances. And so I was like very appreciative just to hear that because I never thought about that way. Even though I went down a bad road and got into a lot of difficult, a lot of trouble, uh, just hadn't thought about that way. So um, moving forward, I left Audrey Carroll High School and I was transferred from Audrey Carroll to a school in the district that was having a lot of issues. And they're looking for the, the leadership. They're looking for an assistant principal to come in and kind of help the principal out. The principal that went over there went over there, and I went to support her. When I got over there, I found out that the school had a lot of gang violence in the school. And more than likely, that was the reason why I was going. But what happened for me going over there, in fact, I recall it police officer telling me, I don't even want to go over that school. He said, I'll tell you what, those students over there, they're going to steal your car and they're going to jump on you. <laughs> so, 
when I heard that, you know, I was, I was actually, I was, uh, I was apprehensive about going. I really was. So apprehensive when school started, that first day of school, I got a call on the radio. Now, keep in mind, I'm thinking about what was just said to me. Don't go to that school because you go to that school, the kids going to fight you, they're going to steal your car. So I get a phone call the first day of school from the bus driver. The bus driver says this, I need administration on the bus lot. I have a student that has been smoking on the bus. Smoking marijuana. So... I go as a new AP in this school that I'm concerned about. I go to meet the bus driver. And I can tell you right now, when I went up on that bus to introduce myself to those students, those students didn't know this here, but I was shaking. <laughs> they didn't know that. But what I said to them really made a difference. I said to those students, I said, my name is Dr. Marvin Bradley. Welcome to E.E. E. Waddell High School. I'm expecting y'all to have a great day. The bus driver said to me, she started kneeling by a student in blue shirt. Blue shirt. She was scared to even point that student out. When she gave me that information, I told the students, I said, I want to see you, you, you and you stand up and go with me again in that count I got the student in the blue shirt okay so I told them all come with me another student said what did they do and I said you too come too and so they all got up everybody else got real quiet in the bus those students got off the bus the student that was involved with smoking marijuana on that bus I knew who it was he did have a blue shirt he was also the student who said to me, what do we do? In a slurry voice. I told him, go to my office. I told the rest of them, dismiss for class and don't be late. That student went to my office that same day I gave him 10 days out of school. It went around like wildfire. Like wildfire. People were saying, Dr. Bradley, this guy's crazy. He ain't playing no games. But I can tell you from that point on, the structure of the school and the thing we were doing for students who's trying to learn went very well. We only had one fight in that school during that, during that year, during that year. And I recall that fight was so big that I suspended 35 students in that one day. The reason why I had to suspend those, that many students is because I share with parents. If your, student gonna, if your kids come here to watch a fight, they came to the wrong school. So just by watching it and being locked out of the classroom, they were suspended for two days. But that's in the message. So when I walked through the hallways and when I dealt with the, the faculty and I dealt with the community, I let people know, I don't have no bad kids, but I do have kids that might be in the wrong school setting. I don't have no bad kids. And, and so that went around pretty good. So I stayed there for two years. And, and uh, I had uh, a gentleman come in and ask me, well, actually he's taking on a assistant superintendent position at Chicago Public Schools, which is where I'm from. And he asked me, would I be willing to move back to Chicago? I took the challenge, went back to Chicago as the director of student support service at Chicago Public Schools. I stayed in Chicago Public Schools for a good year. During the time I was there, I was informed, or I was over the attendance, behavior, and community involvement. Uh, so I attended a lot of different uh, functions for the community. Uh, I had students in Chicago Public Schools. 60% of the students that was on that school roster were going to school. 60%. So 40% of the students are not going. So my challenge was to get these kids back in school. So when I found out it was difficult than it seems, what I did was... The students who missed 12, 14 days consecutively, I asked my counselors to find out who those students were. And once you drop those students off your roster, the attendance go up. So we moved those students. Our attendance went up to 85, 90%. And so those students who 
were coming to school now trying to get in, they had to re-register. And then they had to sign a reason why they had to re-register. So that was that was kudos. So people said, wow, now I can see what's going on. And so they just found out. Um, and then, on top of that, I had meetings for those students which took place. Okay, my meetings took place on Saturdays to re-enroll those students. And I shared with parents, I don't want you to leave your job, come to me on my job. So uh, so I stayed there for a year. Well, I left Chicago, Chicago Public Schools, and I was called from the same gentleman who brought me to Chicago Schools. I was called to become a principal of Northwest Halifax High School in northeastern part of North Carolina. Went up to Northwest Halifax High School as a principal, first year, did a phenomenal job. My first year I got there, I come to find out that the whole district, the whole district was failing. Thirteen schools in the whole district, elementary through high school, all schools were failing. When it brought me to school, I had the understanding of what was going on. My school at that time I walked in there was a 38%, 38 to 40 percent overall composite. That first year we took from 38 to 40 percent to 60. That second year we took from 60 to 69. And that third year we took from 69 to 73. My school had an overall growth of 98.4%. But we did a lot of things. I, I empowered the teachers. I empowered the students. I had, a, I had a student committee. I had students that was doing discipline for students who was getting out of line. I had parents' involvement. Uh, we did a tremendous amount of things in the community for the school. In fact, I would go out on evenings and I had principal I mean, Pepsi with the principal. Oh, I brought parents out to the community, and we just had a wonderful time. During that time, what I did with the parents, I kind of shared the parents what was going on in the school. I talked about what we have as far as how our scores, how they were. If we were having discipline issues, where we were discipline issues. We helped kids get into colleges. It was just a phenomenal and outstanding thing we were doing. And so I was just grateful for that. But that's a little bit about me. So what I want to share with you is some things that I'm going to talk about in the future that I want people to get on board because I know together, working collectively, there's nothing we can do for the success of our students. Again, thank you for listening.